Ahoy, my friends. Ahoy. Keep your voice down, because I'm not sure we're supposed to be here. It's the Gaming Galleon, and I'm Captain Reyes. Well, you know, this is not this is not the pleasure cruise that we usually go on in this situation. Uh, you know, usually, you know, for those of you who don't know how this, this works, every week we go to a different location in the world, and sometimes beyond. And the way we determine where we go on this pirate ship of ours is based on the game we play. You see, we have a little computer here called the Navigator that has a little bit of magic in it. We're not exactly sure how it happens, but somewhere between uh, our homemade PC, the uh, Retron 5, the various other systems that we have pumped into the PC, and some uh, not-so-above-board uh, computer parts, we created the Navigator. And by some strange glitch, whenever we pop a game into the Navigator, whether it be the Retron 5 or PlayStation 3 or Dreamcast or, or whatever, because we've got all the systems here plugged in, the Navigator reads the game, and most PCs will just capture the video for you and then you can play the game. Well, the Navigator is actually hooked up to the uh, auto controls of the pirate ship. And once it reads the game, it reads the destination that that game takes place in. And that says, plot, uh, uh, course plotted, are you ready to proceed? And if you say yes... Well, not only do you get to play the game here if you want to, but the entire boat begins to lurch, whether that be by boat, by, by water, or by air balloon, because the, the galleon has air balloons as well, when needed. It begins to move us to our destination. Now, sometimes these are very easy uh, trips, you know. Uh, usually what we like to do is we'll, we'll leave... Uh, our destination, you know, we'll, we'll get there, I'll do the show, um, once we're there, I get into the captain's quarters here and join you guys for the, the stream, do my little video game show, the rest of the crew, they don't really care about this, this is my thing. Meanwhile, they're taking care of the maintenance of the ship, you know, if something's ripped or something tore along the way, uh, you know, just getting us ready to head out after the production. So once I wrap up, then we usually like to spend a few hours to see where we're at. You know, go get dinner. Maybe there's a party we're invited to. Uh, maybe see the sights. You know, that's a big part of what we do here. And we can only stay for a few hours because we have to leave in the dead of night to get back to Indianapolis where the ship is six days a week, where we live. So that me and the other guys who aren't lucky enough to just be pirates have to go home to their families, or in my case, back home to my bed, so that I can get up in the morning and go to work. So that's how things work around here. And it's great. The fact that we can just see the world one day a week is amazing. But you never know how safe we're going to be. And in the case of today, I popped the game in that we're playing, and the navigator said, course plotted, are you sure you want to go here? And I said, yeah, of course. I mean, the show must go on, right? I'd never seen it do that before. But I said, yeah, let's proceed. The ship began to lurch its way on. I uh, headed out of the deck, you know, make sure, made sure everything was going okay. Scabs had the wheel. Um, you know, everybody seemed to be working okay. So I came back in and uh, tried to de determine where we were going, which is a place called Crimea, Russia. The country of Crimea. I've never heard anything about it. I've heard of Russia. But Crimea? I have no idea. So I did a little research, and apparently Crimea is this country that was annexed from Russia only about three years ago. 
the Russians, uh, uh, Crimea was was originally the part of the Ukraine, which is neighboring Russia. They don't get along. Crimea is a little bit of a, a, a part of the Ukraine. The Russians send a bunch of special forces into the into Crimea, oust their president, put together what the the rest of the world considers to be a very underhanded illegal referendum, aka vote, to decide for the people to decide is Crimea going to stay with the Ukraine or is it going to be a part of Russia? The referendum passes with like 95% to go to Russia with the parentheses, the italicized being not a lot of uh, actual Crimeans ever went out to vote in the first place. But because of this shady vote, Crimea is now part of Russia. And to this day, if this does not sit well with a lot of the rest of Amer uh, the world, including a little country you may have heard of called the United States. So much, in fact, that uh, I believe Obama at the time was president and began to put all these sanctions on Russia so that it would be much harder for them to have global trade, thus hurting the Russian economy. So, this isn't exactly the kind of place where I just want to set the ship down, you know, in the middle of the capital and be like, Hey, what's up? You guys happy with, you guys like pirates? Who plays video games around here? So basically, I've just told the boys, we're basically just up, uh, up against a rocky bank of Crimea. Uh, among some turbulent waters, we're going to get this show out, hopefully... Nobody, you know, no special forces come along and, you know, try and ask for our papers. And we get the F out of here as soon as the broadcast ends. Okay? Now you may be asking yourself, what game would send you to Crimea, Russia? Well, let me get it. Let me show you. This all started with the Retron, the Super Retrocade. My, my favorite Christmas gift this year. We got a little time for this. This game's got a whole bunch of, of uh... This, this plug-and-play has a whole bunch of old arcade games, Nintendo games, including some Data East games. And Data East is known for two... Uh, is known for a bunch, bunch of games, but two of the games on this thing that they made were... Uh, oh, where's that? Oh, there it is. Bad Dudes. Bad Dudes. You and a buddy beat the crap out of a bunch of ninjas to save the President of the United States. And then uh, a fighting game... Called Fighter's History, which at the time of its relief, release was considered such a carbon copy of Street Fighter 2 that Capcom actually tried to sue the pants off of Data East for making it. Now there's a character in each of these games, Bad Dudes and Fighter's History, who's uh, actually pretty well known if you grew up in the Nintendo days, or the arcade days, a guy named Karnov. And that's what we're playing today. Karnov for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now let's take a look at this. You got a guy with a shirt off and a big huge mustache breathing fire at a pterodactyl as some enraged uh, primates and you know we'll throw a little Tyrannosaurus Rex in there rampage the whole situation. Is that not a recipe for a great Nintendo game? The funny thing about this is this originated in the arcade, and this Super Retrocade is filled with obscure Daddy East arcade games that never made it to the light of day. Uh, and you would think, if they're going to put in these other two cameos of Karnov, that they'd put Karnov's actual game in there. And what a treat that would have been, because I remember playing Karnov in the arcade, and it was one of those arcade games that had... A real shock factor to it because the sprites, uh, the graphics of the monsters that you fought were just colossal for the time. And they were they were very evil looking. You're fighting, you know, demons where that they they're, they're throwing they have torsos and they're they're flying through the air, but their their bottom half is like in, in, engulfed in flame and there's chimera and uh, stone golems just hurling 
massive boulders at you, and then the bosses themselves are larger than life. So this was a very exciting game, and I'd, I would have loved to have shared the arcade experience with you guys, but to this day, there's really no way to play Karnov on console. At least not without, you know, filling an SD card full of ROMs. I feel like that's just not as romantic. One day, maybe, the company that made the Super Retro Arcade will make another plug-and-play that's got the original arcade Karnov on it. That would be a treat for me. But we don't have that, so we're going to play the NES one, a game I'm very familiar with, or at least used to be. I played it so much as a child and even later on that I feel like I didn't even need to play it today. I wanted to go in blind so we could experience all of the the monsters and the ferocity and the interesting powers and uh, landscape together. Okay? So let's get started. I'm going to don the old harp of transition here for you. Oh boy. I just dropped the tech. That's, that's not good. It's Karnov for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, uh, I forgot to mention what Karnov has to do with Crimea. Well, we popped the game in, and the navigator read from the backstory that this village, that Karnov, the basic story of Karnov is this big dragon has stolen the treasure of Babylon from his home village, the village of. Crimea. Crimea. Do you see how close this is? So here we are in Crimea, Russia, trying to defend Crimea, the village, and Karnar for the NES. And just a little side note, they actually have his full name here. It's Jinborov Karnovsky. Trying to remember that. I can't. I've tried to do all afternoon. It's Karnov for the NES. All right. Well, you got a couple dragons here. Let me get my headphones on here. You got a couple dragons. Breathing fire. Get ready for some really catchy music. This is good stuff. All right, easiest pie. You got a jump button. You got yourself uh, a shoot fireball out of your nose. Snot shot style I pulled up picked up that little orange uh, thing there and that gave me a power up now I can't reach this what's up with that huh well this is the cool thing about Karnov is there was all kinds of interesting power-ups in the game including this ladder here if I press the select button boom look at that I, I used it and now I have that uh, that ladder you'll notice the ladder has no number, so I can use the ladder over and over. The the boots, on the other hand, I can only use those once. Now I would, I'm pretty sure the boots are high jump, so let's give it a shot. Yes. Oh, come on. All right. Well, maybe if I combine the ladder with the the high jump. Yeah, I did it. That that beeping. That means that the shoes are about to give out. So there you go. There's all kinds of that. That really sets this game apart, replay-wise, is all the fascinating items that you have. I don't know what this bomb is for. Whoa, whoa! Ah! Oh, and that's that's not good. That means I got hurt. But I got another power up, so I'm back in business. I don't remember what the K's do. I think I think you get a free life if you get a certain amount. That's how those work. Uh oh. And look at look at this is there's all kinds of stuff up there that, that maybe had I used saved my boots for, I could have gotten those. So you know, a lot of exploration involved in this game, especially for just your typical arcadey platformer. Can I get these? Oh no, I can't. Can only go one way or the other. I, I decided to take the high road. Uh, you know, if I give you one universal tip in 2D platformers, always take the high road. It's always better to have the drop on on your opponents. 
Oh, that was a bomb. I didn't need to use that. Ugh, shoot. I'm going to use my ladder. Oh, but there's two bombs here, so that's okay. I kind of want to try and bomb this door. Think it's going to do anything? Let's try. Oh, that's not right. No, no good. All right. I'll tell you what, this music. I've had this on my my lips all afternoon. And I didn't I did it like I popped the game in just enough to make sure we did a button check. But I only needed to hear like 10 seconds of this this silly Karnov music to have it stuck in my head for like the next hour. It's crazy catchy. I feel like we're getting, like my muscle Oh, now look, now there, there's some wings. So yeah, they they're limited. But yes, you can fly in this game. And uh, I don't I don't know if I lose all my items if I die. I'm pretty sure I do. Ah! Oh man. I should have just rained on him. That's not good, dude. All right. So we've got our items still, but we're downgraded in fireballs. That sucks. And I'm still going to take the high road just for safety's sake. Alright, give me that. So this is a pretty easy game to find. Pretty common. Uh, these days, you're not going to spend any more than somewhere between 5 to $10 on it. But if you are looking to build on your NES collection, you see this guy. This should be one of the first ones in, on the shelf you pick up. Because it's it plays well and it's it's got a lot of uh, a lot of secret stuff going on. Definitely encourages exploration and experimentation. I kind of want to try and use the bomb on this boss. Of course, I hope I'm not overcomplicating things by doing that. Didn't work. I got him. Yeah! Alright, no problem. Alright, we'll do a little more here. And then we'll hit up the booty segment. Oh! Oh my gosh. That was dumb. Oh! Now what did I do there? I lost my ladder. I stuck it out there. And lost it. Let's go one more time here. I gotta be careful because I don't think... I don't... Uh, it should be continuous. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh! What a jerk! Guy shooting two bullets at two different velocities at two different directions. Okay, so we'll continue. And we'll leave it we'll leave it there for now. Oh! And I threw a bomb. <laughs> That's great, Raz. Just keep keep wasting all your stuff. That's wonderful. I lost my ladder. This is one of those games where you, you'll get like five minutes into the gameplay, uh, blow it, you know, you'll, you'll screw something up, you'll forget an item, you'll die unexpectedly, and it's like, alright, well, I may have two more lives left, but reset on the NES, because I'm going to need that, that item that I left behind. Eventually get to that point where you're like, you know, you know where all the items are, and you're going to want all of, all of them to advance. But it's a good little, fun little game. Uh, Karnov's got a lot of heart. And uh, you gotta love that. That's that uh, pudgy little belly he's got going on. Alright, so the booty segment. Uh, lots of stuff here. Got about four deals? Yeah, about four deals. I guess we'll go in order how we got them. Uh, you know, 
I I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you'll like them. I don't know. That they, I just I, I don't know that they blow the door off anything. You know, but uh, I feel like you can see what's in there. Can you see what's in there? Don't look. For God's sakes, don't look. All right. So is that better? Yeah, whatever. We'll get to them. All right. So this first uh, joint was uh, just one of those beautiful pawn deals where you walk in, you see a wall of games on the, see a bunch of games on the wall. Some of them look like they're pretty nice. And, uh, you, you know, I asked the price, it said three bucks each, but if you get a whole bunch, we'll probably do a little better for you. So basically, uh, we got this stack of PS3 games. I think some Xbox 360 games here also for $2 each. And, um, they're all pretty good titles. Not too bad. I think I might've gotten a couple of games that we just didn't have, but for the most part, these are either AAA titles for the, the system, uh, that may end up as trade bait because we have them already. Or, uh, you know, trade it in for, for a better game. Or, uh, I don't know, give them to somebody else who's got a PS3. So we'll see what happens here. All right. Off the top here, we have Dark Souls 2. $2. Dragon Age Inquisition. Haven't played this one yet. I haven't played Dark Souls 2 either. Um, but uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, I hear, is... Really cool from a, uh, a, um, what kind of standpoint am I looking for? Open, open world fantasy standpoint. That one's kind of turned my head. Uh, here's one I, I played a, a pretty good amount of. Dragon Age Origins, the first Dragon Age. However, this is the Ultimate Edition. You get this, uh, I feel like this autofocus is going crazy. Hold on a second. Fix it. Is that bothering you? That's bothering me. I don't know why it's on. Here we go. All right. That's better. That's better. Okay, so there you go. Uh, Dragon Age, the Ultimate Edition. So this basically had the main campaign, which is massive, the additional campaign, which came on disc, uh, which was also massive. Uh, and then it also says it includes. All seven downloadable content packs. That's, uh, you know, I don't know what all these... They, they don't really say what they are. They say things like Warden's Keep, Return to Oskadar, Witch Hunt, you know, the Golems of uh, Agmaric. I assume these are all just additional quest campaigns, uh, additional stories. And if you know anything about Bioware, uh, they're all about story and character development so these are pretty meaty games and uh i love that the ultimate disc ultimate edition comes on just one big massive uh disc there so pretty nice got the manual uh this little sticker little goo gone that'll come right off we're really we're really that worried about it uh lord of the rings conquest no case uh but this is not one i ever leave behind for two dollars that's for sure this is made by a company called Pandemic. Uh, I loved Pandemic when they were still around. They're the ones who made the original Star Wars Battlefront. And this is the uh, akin to that. This is the Tolkien version of Star Wars Battlefront. The Pandemic PS2 version of Star Wars Battlefront. However, this is for the PlayStation 3. This is very early on in the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360's life. Uh, lifespan. It's not a perfect game, but... Uh, and it was originally, obviously, intended for online. But if you and a friend are Tolkien fans, you know, one of you can be an archer, one of you can be a wizard, and here you are, you're in Helm's Deep together, fighting off hordes and hordes of orcs. So there's fun to be had here, and the game to this day eh, certainly holds its value more than most PS3 games. Killzone Trilogy. Woo, this will keep you busy, huh? Killzone Trilogy for $2. So big it comes on two discs. So you get your two PS2 games here. Killzone 1 and 2 on this guy. And then Killzone 3 wraps it up. Not bad at all. Fun games. I haven't played a, I haven't played a 2 and 3. But uh, 1 I, I played a bit of. A lot of fun. Very solid shooter. Far Cry 4. 
Xbox 360. Uh, we've got this for a couple systems, but it's just a great game. Two bucks, hard to, hard to leave by. I, I don't think we have for 360, so we grab it. Uh, here's one we didn't have. Blood Bowl. This is hard to find for $2. Uh, I don't know. I... I remember my friends back in you know the eighties and nineties, uh, back when board games were were the best. You know those were the deep games. Nintendo games are fun, but if you wanted to get some people together and really, you know, rack each other's brains, you had to go to board games. And Blood Bowl was one of them. It's basically Dungeons and Dragons meets NFL Blitz in a turn-based strategic form. And here we have it for the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty. Pretty hot. I know there's a man. Uh, they made a sequel of this for the modern day systems, PS4, Xbox One. So uh, yeah, it should be pretty decent. I have not played it, but I'd love to sit down with a friend. Maybe I'll play this with Pat the Chef sometime. I bet he'd get into this. Yeah, totally. All right, it's falling apart on me. Here we go. Okay, so here well, let's go. Let's do these. Leave that one for last. Uh, another one we didn't have, Spider-Man Edge of Time. Some of these later Spider-Man games, for whatever reason, really hold their value. Uh, the big one of this generation that turned my head the most was... Uh... Oh. Shattered, Shattered Dimensions. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Uh, basically, is it's, it's four different dimensions of spider-man uh there's like a futuristic spider-man in a futuristic world there's amazing spider-man and more of a cartoony world then there's even noir spider-man in like a a very dark um you know uh what's the word i'm looking for not utopian dystopian environment uh i've never played shattered dimensions but man ever since i've it's sitting in the hold i've always wanted to sit down with that one Need to get around to it. This was made after it. And uh, I don't know how good it is, but it holds its value, so it can't be that bad. So yeah, happy to find that guy. That's not two player, is it? No. Dark Souls. Original Dark Souls. Hear this one's better than the second, I don't know. Shadow of the Damned. Uh, basically just picked it up because we didn't have it. It's made by uh, Sudi51. Sudi Sudi 51, maybe it's 54, I think it's 51. 51, Sudi 51. That's a guy's name. He made uh, a whole bunch of stuff. He made uh, Killer7, uh, the No Heroes game, No More Heroes games for the Wii. He's, a, he's, a, he's an interesting developer. Uh, play, PlayStation All-Star Battle Royale. I loved this game when it came out. I'd like to do a voyage on this sometime. I think my disc was missing, but I, I would have picked this up as a second copy anyway. So there you go. We got that for two bucks. I mean, there's this this is basically Smash Brothers, but it's got guys like, you know, the Killzone guy. Or, uh, you know, Parappa the Rapper. I forgot Parappa the Rapper was in this. Jack and Daxter there. They were my mains. Uh, who else is there? Hayachi from Tekken. You got Nathan Drake there. Nathan Drake's not on here, but I know he's in this. And then uh, Cole from uh, from Infamous. Fun game. Very fun game. All fighting, four-player. Uh, another copy of Dragon Age Ultimate Edition. Two bucks in the Ultimate Edition. I just can't pass that up. There's no way. Aragon for the original Xbox. Always wanted this one. Uh, was looking for the right price of the dollar. I, all these other ones were two bucks. But this being original Xbox, this was a dollar. We grab that. Hunted, a split screen or online, but I, I think I played split screen co-op game. One guy uh, is a tank, the other one's an archer, the chick is an archer. Uh, sounds like a great co-op game. I haven't played it, but it looks pretty fun. Bethesda released it. I don't think they've made it, though. I don't know. Uh, Wolfenstein New Order. I know I have this for PS4, but again, two bucks. There's no way I was going to leave this one behind. Very hot. And then, of course, the old trick of, you know, the, these are not sitting on the, the wall with no discs. So as they're pulling out the book to, to populate these cases, you always want to keep an eye on the book. And even maybe ask if they're nice enough, if you ask nice enough. 
and they're they're amiable about it. Uh, can I look through the book of discs? They let me, and I'm happy I did. We found some good stuff there, which didn't have cases, but we were still happy to take for two dollars each. You got a second copy of Dark Souls Two. Always happy to pick this up for two dollars. Ultra. Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4. This is the one where every character in the Street Fighter 4 generation made it. This is the one to have if you're going to play Street Fighter 4. And then finally this one that uh, I sold a long time ago. I had picked up some, some games, a stack of games, and one of them had to go. I wasn't willing to, you know, I, I, I was a, a big stickler on sell as much as you spend. You know, make back as much as you spend at the time. So I bought, you know, maybe like five games, and one of them had to go in order to make sure we got them all for, for nothing, for gravy. So I sold this one at the time, have not seen it since, until now. Um, here it is, the Silent Hill HD Collection, uh, which I believe has Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3 remastered on it. From what I understand, as far as the retro gaming community is concerned, this thing is, is a bit of an insult. It's a bit of a wash. Uh, which is part of the reason why I felt at the time... I didn't know that at the time, but I felt like... I'm going to sell this because it's a compilation. We, we already have Silent Hill 2 and 3 in the hold on the PS2 where it originated. So for now, let's bank on finding this later on down the line and paying for the lot. And that's what we did. Here we are maybe maybe a year later or so since we made that sale. And we find Silent Hill Collection for two bucks each. So that's not bad. Uh, so that was one, two, three games, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 times 2. You're looking at around uh, $37 there, uh, which is a lot. But I think if we sold, say, like Lord of the Rings Conquest and maybe, I don't know, the Killzone Trilogy and maybe one of the Dark Souls, a lot of these are doubles that we have in the hold, so we can, we can do that and make all that money back. So that's probably what's going to happen. Some of these are going to go on the chopping block. But a lot of premium, awesome RPGs here and action titles. Couldn't leave them behind for two bucks. How are we doing on time? Ooh, man, we, uh, well, okay, we got about five minutes, so let's, yeah, we'll be all right. Okay, this, uh, very rare to find these. I walked into a place, they had a wall full of games. Uh, I said, what's the story on the games? I said, well, you know, PS4 games are and Xbox One, $15 each. But everything else on the, fl the wall is two for five. And rare of rare occurrences, I saw, well, what about the VD games you have there? And she's like, oh yeah, those are for sale. So here we go. We got these for $2.50 each. Vita games, we don't, I, just, I never see them for the right price. I never see them for sale used for the right price. I just don't think this chicken realized that these were kind of current generation. But uh, so, you know... We got, kind of got lucky on that. Maybe if it was a different seller, he wouldn't have been so willing to let these go. But here we go. We got, uh, for the Vita, God of War Collection. I don't have a Vita, by the way. God of War Collection. This has uh, God of War 1 and 2 on it. Arcana Heart, Love Max. Uh, Arcana Heart 3, Love Max, is basically a very competent 2D fighting game, uh, kind of on the level of uh, Guilty Gear level of craziness, but it's all chicks. It's all chicks, and it's some weird chicks, too. Like, I think there's one that she's fighting in, in, in Jell-O. <laughs> Talking about fan service, huh? And then uh, Conception 2 uh, by Atlas. This is a, a dungeon. I had to look this one up. This was a dungeon crawler slash dating simulator. Man, does, does, does any platform get more Japanese than the Vita? Ugh. And then she said, you know, 
two for five. We were at 750 there. Wanted to round it out to 10. So she did have one decent 3DS game here. We picked up Pokemon Alpha Sapphire for uh, for 250. It's in there. You guys want to see what a Vita game looks like? No manuals in any of these. Look at that. Jeez. How exciting. Can't read what it says. Arcana Heart 3. All right, so there you go. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll happen across Evita. I'm already trading off Conception 2 and Pokemon to a couple friends. Okay, so uh, walked into another pawn shop last Friday. Maybe it was this week. It was earlier this week. And uh, asked if they had any games coming out. She said she had a system with some games. Who knows what that could be, but she pulls it off in the bag. It's a PS4. Some games here were decent. She was going to do 8 bucks each on them. I felt like these games, there were more, I felt like these three were worth the $8. So we went with them. You've got uh, Skyrim, the special edition, for $8. Gonna, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig back into that. It's been a while since I've been in Skyrim. Bioshock Collection. I've not, I played a little bit of Infinite. Well, maybe not a little bit. Maybe like 10 hours of Infinite. Never played the original. But this has all three of the Bioshocks on it. What's in here? Oh, look, it's so big. It's so big, it's got two discs in there. That's why it was heavy. You've got Bioshock Infinite on one, and then Bioshock 1 and 2 on the other. That's pretty hot. And then uh, Battlefield 1, which uh, my buddy Angry Hoosier has been, been getting on me about trying so I installed it I don't know we'll see personally I think the last of us is enough player versus player that I need in my life but we'll try this one out thought eight bucks was fair all right uh here's the good deal uh this is uh thanks to bismuth um that was actually I want to I do want to thank uh the manager who who hooked me up with these these were uh, this is Ashley thanks Ashley Appreciate that. All right. So Biz hooked me up with these at the pawn shop. Uh, I was picking up some retro stuff from him. We'll see in a future voyage. But there were all these toys everywhere. He had like the weirdest toys. Uh, like he had a, a complete in box G.I. Joe slash Transformer that looked like it was only available from the Comic Con in San Diego in 2011. It had a label in the bottom, and it was this huge $200 price box. There was all these, they took me in the back, there was all this mint G.I. Joe stuff, mint Transformer stuff. I'm like, where did all this come from? He's like, well, there's this guy who just has all these games, and he got in and over, uh, toys, he got in over his head, and now he had to bring all this stuff in. He's going to try and buy it back, but we've got it for now. And then I said, oh, well, that's crazy. And then he said, oh, and he brought some PS4 games, too. So you want to check them out? I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? I'm like, how about five bucks each? And I'm like, okay, now we're talking. So five bucks each, we got these. Uh, Darksider Warmaster War Edition. We've got this for PlayStation 3, but I've never played it. It's kind of a hybrid between uh, God of War and Zelda. Sounds interesting. Homefront the Revolution. Don't know much about this one. Probably would have left this behind, but it had this, uh, it came in, in the sexy steel box. You know, sometimes it's hard to leave these, leave the steel box behind. For $5, I thought it looked all right. It looked like a, looks like a fair third-person shooter. I think you're up again. Philadelphia, 2029. All right. Don't get out to Philadelphia that often. Uh, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Never played the first one. Here, this is a pretty fun, approachable, easy to to uh, screw around with kind of game. Parkour. Uh, we bought, got both these on the PS3, but here we are on the PS4. The remastered prototypes, Prototype 1 and 2, on the same disc there. With all the DLC. Pure Chess. I don't know. Just looked, it, it, it just looked, I don't know. The shocking thing about this game, though, is this isn't online. What's up with that? Why wouldn't they make a chess game online on the PS4? I mean, was it really that hard? 
So that's kind of weird. But I don't know. There's a bunch of different sets. Even uh, just kind of grabbed me. Different sets sitting in different locations and five bucks. And then finally, Ark. How about that, huh? Ark Survival Evolved. This is an expensive game. Uh, this this game still holds its value around fifty, sixty dollars, even used. Uh, initially, my thought was uh, I'm going to sell this because I don't have a good history with this game. Uh, Mary used to play this, and it just looked like it was beyond tedious. Uh, you're you know you're logging on to like clean up Tyrannosaurus dung. I don't know. It looked. I saw she was like part of like a high level guild and I would watch her play and the 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 base that they made it looked like one of those factories that you see you know chickens like a chicken factory with with none of none of the free rangeness like these animals are just like penned in and we're just waiting for them to crap eggs and 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 feces I don't know uh basically you're dropped on an island with a hundred other players online and you can evolve from a stick in your hand to training all the, the dinosaurs and different animals to, to bend to your will. Uh, you can craft, build, you can even, you know, you can make a machine gun here. Th this picture pretty much says it all. It's just a huge game of exploration and survival and crafting. And my initial thought was to sell it right off, but I have to admit, I did install it. I'm going to try it this weekend. I think I want to at least play it a little bit, but I feel like I'm going to sell it. I just feel like $50 for, for a PlayStation 4 game, that's going to depreciate easily. You know, I'm sure in two months this is going to be a $30 game. Um, I think now is the time to, to sell it and get a little bit of the, the cheddar back for all these games. So that's it. That was uh, the games themselves. $30 for those six games, and then you're looking at another $24 for the Skyrim lot. So that was like $30. That's like $60 in, you know, PS4 games. But how many did we get? Eight of them? Pretty hot. And there are a lot of good titles. Many of these had more than one game on them. So not too bad, huh? Not bad at all. If I don't say so myself. All right, let's get back to Karnov. We've got about 10 minutes of Karnov, and then we'll hit the mailbag. All right, how's that sound? It's, uh, oh. Put all these on the Harper transition. Hold on. There we go. All right, here we go. I mean, that was like almost $100 worth of stuff. Yeah, we're going to need to make some sales. But look at that. Arc alone will pay for half of it. Pretty crazy, huh? All right. Uh, Karnoff. Karnoff for the NES. All right, here we go. See if we can beat this level two boss here. All right. Uh, I do not like the, this guy's shooting pattern. It's way too random. Oh, come on. We gotta try these, these, uh... Ah! Uh! Oh, I can't use the, I can't, I can't use the wings on command. Huh, interesting. There's a pellet. I need that. Oh boy. I gotta get up there. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me because I want to shoot you. There we go. Ah! Now, the, the, the sprites in this game are not that impressive. They're competent. They're imaginative. I, I like that goblin there. I always liked him. But they're not that impressive. And that's why I really feel uh, like the arcade port of this needs to be dropped on, on maybe next year's Super Retrocade, perhaps? Uh, because the, the original... Oh, boy. 
Oh boy. Oh, you little jerk. <laughs> Just monsters like this guy. What? What is the rhyme or reason? Come on! Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> How was I supposed to predict that guy's... That guy's, uh... Oh, I guess we're taking the lower level. Alright. Oh, boy. This guy's not predictable. That's not good. Boy. Here we go. Oh, of course. Of course. Lovely. Oh, what? Now we're stuck? When we're going up? Hello? Ah! I'm sorry. I don't mean to be yelling on you like that. Sorry. Okay. I, you know, you know what bothers me about this? I didn't take this way, guys. They're sticking me with this. All right, he's dead. They're sticking me with this, this, <laughs> this punishment level. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me. Why, why would they stick me here? All right, I get to start over there. There we go. I wonder how many... I think it's unlimited continues, which is nice. And I keep my ladder, which is also very nice. Oh, he hit me? There's no way. Whew. But yeah, a lot of memories. A lot of memories playing this in the arcade. A lot of memories playing this uh, in the neighborhood. A lot of memories playing this is is a is like maybe a college student. When I when I pulled up my NES again, uh, this one gets got a lot of play out of me. I just think it's got a really brilliant style. Gameplay is rock solid, and the fact that all these weird items. Because you can fill up that whole line with, with different items that do different... You know, we have these wings. We may never know what they do. We may not get to a point where they're... They're... They're, uh... Relevant. It's kind of a shame. I mean, I have no idea what they are. Oh my god, not this guy again. Now I know I can... I can kind of sit on his nucleus. We're running. We're not letting that guy corner us. Not this time. Oh, oh no. Oh no. There was a power up up there. There was all kinds of stuff up there. See, that's why you always take the high road. And don't botch it like old Raz. And what do we got? We got a boss to deal with. Whoa, look at her. Uh, <laughs> That's quite a boss, huh? Some lady out walking her, her, her lion. All right, we'll see if we we'll probably run these lives out, and then we'll wrap her up for the wrap up the old voyage here in in the politically questionable country of Crimea, Russia. I haven't heard uh, any uh, commotion outside the door of the old captain's quarters, so. Seems like uh, none of the Russian special forces have come across our ship, thankfully. I'm going to use the, use the ladder. Use the high jump boots to get the, the extra Karnovs. Oh, did you see him? He was like a, a rock golem. It's the Monsters of Rock Tour. That's not my joke. That's that's Mystery Science Theater 2000. Look, I'll steal jokes. Gladly, but I'll also give credit. You, you ever know somebody who, like, you're saying a joke and he will... I hate this. Like, you'll say a joke and then he'll either... 
later on... Ooh, that I remember being a really good item. I don't remember what it does. The, these these monsters are so much more underwhelming than I remember. Because I remember them as arcade, the arcade, their arcade counterparts, and they're huge. Okay, I think that mask reveals hidden items. I think that's what that does. Oh, of course there's a boss there. You couldn't have revealed that kind of me? You say a really good joke, everybody around you laughs, you're like at a bar or something. You say, you know... Boy, boy are my arms... You know, I, I just flew in from LA and boy are my arms tired. Everyone laughs, and then the laughter kind of tapers off. And as it's tapering off, you realize that one of the guys isn't laughing. He said something like, Yeah, I know, my arms are really exhausted. Are you piggybacking my joke, sir? That was a free guy, wasn't it? How many of those caves did I get? I like that ring. I hate when piggy... You know what I'm saying? You ever, you ever meet anybody who piggybacks jokes like that? Oh, what a nightmare. Trying to be bad, loony. I've also met people who, st straight up, I'll say a joke and then like a week later, maybe even a day, maybe even the same sh work shift. I think that was a shield and I can actually use it. We're going to try that when we reach the next boss. Uh, in the same work shift, we'll, we'll, we'll flat out say your joke. Oh man, Tyrannosaurus Rex. I put the shield on. Oh, you're not screwing with me, brah. That shield is nice. Yeah, we got him! Oh! I think we gotta leave it there. I mean, it doesn't get much better. I, 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 eat your heart out, Mega Man. I'm leaving with lightning. All right, we'll learn. That was great. A little T-Rex action there. I mean, come on. How can you say no to that, huh? Card off. I'm gonna take a look at card. Where's that instruction manual? Look at that one more time. Good old Jinmo Janikov. What was his name? Jin Jinborov Konovsky. There he is. Jinborov Konovsky, otherwise known as Karnov. There you go, Karnov. There's your. There's your moment in the sun, sir. I don't know why they didn't put you in the the Super Retrocade as a hero. The two games you're in, you're, you're a bad guy. But we all know, those of us who were, who were in creeping around arcades and playing the NES, we all know you're a hero. Good man. All right. Let's check out the mailbag, shall we? What's going on over here? Bag tells no tales. Feels like we got a couple in here. What's this? This is from Strong Arm Panda. On YouTube, look me up. Mr. Strong Arm Panda, who knows where this came from. I think this is from a convention from like years ago. It just happens to be sitting in there. Whoever Strong Arm Panda is. I know what I'm doing tonight. Check in though. All right. Uh, Let's see what we got here. Can I get my hat? There we go. Okay, this comes from uh, uh, XXL Man Dalaran. And he writes What do you like more, Golden Axe or Streets of Rage? Ooh, that's quite a question. Uh, those are both uh, very prolific uh, Sega Genesis era uh, 2D beat em ups. You can play with a friend. And uh, while they're basically the same genre, made by the same company, Sega, they uh, are very different from one another in terms of setting. Golden Axe takes place in a, a fantasy realm with monsters and skeletons and dwarves and, and magic barbarians and streets of rage takes place 
in a, a, a crime-ridden city where three uh, police officers take it upon themselves to put down their badge and hit the streets, cleaning up uh, their city one bad guy at a time, one gang member at a time. There's knives. You're breaking... You're breaking bottles over guys' heads. You're, you know, you're throwing guys over your shoulder into like telephone booths. Uh, you know, you're you're fighting in every location you think of. There's uh, even even uh, get scrappy and uh, even start scrapping right on right on the field of a baseball stadium. And uh, a great game. Uh, if we're talking about the series, well, I don't know. Golden Axe versus Streets of Rage, there's really no contest. It's Golden Axe all day. Streets of Rage didn't really uh, get make it to work. I, I mean, I guess Streets of Rage, when it came out, was good. It, it was basically paired up against Final Fight at the time. SNES said Final Fight. And Streets of Rage was on the Genesis. And Streets of Rage was the better game, only that it was two-player. But Final Fight had bigger sprites. It played better. Um, I don't know. It wasn't in Streets of Rage 2 happened that it was like they were king. Uh, I would probably put Streets of Rage 2 over at least the first two Final Fights. I don't know about the third. Uh, as for Golden Axe, they made three of them. Two Only two of them made it here to the States. The third one I've played in like compilations, and it's really fun. Uh, but if you're really just going to take this question as strict as possible and say Golden Axe versus Streets of Rage, Golden Axe all day. Golden Axe all day. The story was incredible. The, 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 you know, for being a brawler, there's like some real twists and turns in the story that, uh, the, the, the monsters that you're fighting are awesome. The music is epic. Um, the magic, the spells, just everything what they did right and the arcade version is even better um but yeah definitely golden axe i'm a real swords and serpents kind of guy uh, i'd love to live in like a medieval time i probably wouldn't last very long and i'd probably be missing toilet paper but you know i don't know i really romanticize uh, a time where people were just walking around with with swords on their backs just trying to you know make a wage I think that's that's awesome that sounds like fun so golden axe thank you for the question appreciate that uh, xxl uh man dalaran uh if you have a question leave it as a whisper send me put it in the the, the mess hall gaminggallion at gmail.com whatever and we'll say it here we'll talk about it here on the show all right okay we gotta get the heck out of crimea as soon as possible so it was nice being here, but it's going to be even better to get out of here and head back to waters we may be a little more tolerated by. Uh, so we'll head out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week for another voyage here out of the Silicon Seas. I'm Captain Raz. And until next time, I want to do... To ye Spanish maidens, by well and adieu, ye ladies of Spain, for we received orders for to get the heck out of Crimea, and we may never see ye fair ladies again. Janitov Garnovsky. Now that's a name with some gusto, huh? Keep your powder dry, mateys. <laughs>